In the following tutorial, I will explain you how to use Wicker to classify sentences into certain classes. Later on, we use that build model in order to classify new sentences. Before we start, we need a training set of sentences with already classified sentences and a testing set with unclassified sentences. For that purpose, uh, we create two, two R files. How to do that is already explained in other tutorials, so I'm not going to go into much detail here. So I have this training set here, and it looks like this. Actually, you can just copy that into an R file if you want. It's based on, uh, it has two columns, one string column and one class column. The string column just contains sentences, string sentences, and the class column contains three different classes, 0, 1, and 2. So what we have here are several sentences belonging to class 1. They are dealing with red cars, followed by several classes belonging to class 1, about high-flying planes, and three sentences about bright light belonging to class 2. These examples are really easy and it's quite obvious why these sentences belong into certain classes, but on the other hand that makes, us, makes it very easy for you to understand the concept. So now we're going to train a classifier to understand why certain sentences belong to certain classes. So you start Wicker and then you see this GUI and now we choose the Explorer. What we do now is also possible with the knowledge flow, but at the moment I, I don't know how to do that with the knowledge flow, so I chose the Explorer. So we open the Explorer. What we do now is we open our training R file. So it was this file. Now we open it and we see, okay, it has, it has found two columns, a text column and a class column. We see, okay, here are five sentences, five and three sentences belong to their respective classes. Wicca does now not know which column is supposed to be the class. Either this could be the class or that could be the class. So now we need to tell Wicca that this is, should be the class. To do that, we choose a filter under the unsupervised filters, the attribute unsupervised filters, and we choose the class assigner. What is important here, we need to assign a class to the last column also, we need to check this column and then we click on Apply. Now, this column is the class. You can't see it here, but it is the class at the moment. So now we can switch to the Classify tab. And here we say, OK, use my training data. We could also use cross-validation, but it's not reasonable because our data set is really small. So we use, use Training Set. Now we create a classifier. For our purpose, we need a classifier that combines a filter and a classifier. Sorry, we click on choose, and then we choose a meta classifier called filtered classifier. Then we click here, and for the filter, we need to choose an unsupervised attribute filter called string to word vector. What the string to word, word vector is doing, it converts the sentence into a vector of single words. Only if we do this we can classify sentences because the classifier builds up a model based on this vector of words. If we click here on the string to word vector, we can um, conf configure the settings. What I also want is, I want to take into consideration the um, frequency of certain words. So we check these two first to true. And in order to apply that, we also have to, set to, to click here true for output word counts. Also, I want to reduce all words to, the, to a stemming version. That means like if you have the words drives, drive or driving, they will all be reduced to the word drift. That makes the classifier better because it recognizes that these three words belong to the same yeah, basic word. Uh, here you can choose the iterated Lovins stammer. 
Further, we use a stop list. That means that um, yeah, useless words are not taken into consideration. For example, like to or I. As the classifier, we leave the J48 tree classifier. This setting will first then uh, convert the sentence to a string, ver string vector of words. And then this tree classifier will create a classification tree in order to classify the sentences and to learn how to classify it. So now, last thing we have to select is what we want to classify. So we want to classify, let, train the, the, the um, classifier to learn the class attribute. It is already selected, so it's right. So now we can click on start and it works. What we can see here above uh, are all the attributes that were created by the filter. So the sentences were um, yeah, split into words, into stemmed words. So we see um, yeah, words like oxic, which stands for oxygen. Um, blue stands for blue with an E and, and so on. These are the stemmed, stemmed, stemmed words. What we can also see here is um, the classification tree. It's very small because we didn't have much sentences and they were very easy to be classified. So what this means is the following. The classifier checks, does the sentence contain the word car? Lower equals zero means no word car appeared in the sentence. If the word car appears more than zero, so at least once, then it's assigned to class zero. So when the word car does not appear in the sentence, the, the tree classifier will check, does the word plane occur in the sentence? If it doesn't occur, it's assigned to class two. If it does occur, it's assigned to class one. What we can see here is that classifier is really good. It classifies 100% of all instances right. That is also um, visible here in the so-called confusion matrix. All classes coming in from A are assigned to class A. All classes which are B are also assigned to class B. All classes from C are also assigned to class C. So we have the perfect 100% classifier. That's the best uh, possible um, situation we could have. So now we save this classifier by right-clicking on it here. And we say save model. And I'll save it just somewhere on my hard drive. Here I have already some other training models, so I, I call it demo3 model. So to demonstrate you that this classifier really works for new texts, that it can be loaded, we just close Weka completely, then we reopen Weka, we open the Explorer, Unfortunately, now I have to load some kind of file to reach the classifier tab. That's a bit annoying, but yeah, that's Weka. So just open some file, it really doesn't matter. Now we can go to the classifier tab. Now I select my testing set. Maybe I should first show you how the testing set looks like. So we open it. So here we have three sentences. Wait, this is the wrong testing set. This is the right one. So we have, again, we have four sentences here. What is extremely important that this area has to be exactly the same like the training set. That's one of Weka's basic assumptions that the training set uh, columns have exactly to be the same like the testing columns. If it doesn't, you can't, you, you can't uh, classify your text. So, because we don't know the classes yet now, or yet, uh, we just put a simple question mark here, and Weka will re recognize these question marks as missing values, and that is exactly what we want. So now we um, go into the Explorer, and we uh, choose this testing set. And uh, secondly, we have to load our previously created model, which was called demo3 model. And you can check the model here. It is 
yeah, the same that we have already seen. Here you can see the tree that will be used to classify the new sentences. And here you can see all the relevant words that will be taken into consideration. So we don't need to do anything here because, um, yeah, what is the class is already defined in the model. So what we do now is we right click on this and we say reevaluate model on current test set. So we do that now. So far, we don't see any predictions. And at the first glimpse, you might think, OK, something is wrong because also the confusion matrix all only contains zeros. But that's reasonable. First, the confusion matrix w can only contain zeros because we haven't assigned any classes yet. So we can't say um, whether an already assigned class is the right, is already also the predicted class because nothing was assigned beforehand. In order to see the predictions, we have to click on the More Options button here, and we have to check uh, to, to, to display our predictions. So we choose, in our case, the plain text, which is best suitable for this um, video tutorial, and we say OK. If we re-evaluate re -evaluate the model again, the predictions appear. So the classifier worked. Here we see we had four sentences, one, two, three, four. What this means is within the sentences, the first sentence um, yeah, was, wasn't assigned to any class. We didn't know it. So here we can see the question mark. And the same holds true for all, the other, all other sentences. The classes are unknown. So in the predicted column, we can see that um, yeah, the first sentence was assigned to class 0. The second was assigned to class 1 and the third to class 2 and the fourth to class 0. And this is exactly right. I know that, it is, that this is right because I created the sentences. Um, also, we here see that the tree could be used like the, that it was 100% true, 100% sure that the prediction is right. Of course, it's only based on the tree. The tree might be wrong. But based on the tree, the predictions are 100% right. I hope you, had you have understood what I did. If not, please post questions and I will be lucky to answer them. Thank you for your attention.